Another four-star commitment for the Louisville football program. We will discuss the most recent recruiting victory for Scott Satterfield and company on today's episode of the Locked On the Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. As always, I'm your host, Dalton Pence. I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I also do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. And I want to take this time to personally thank you all as I always do for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Global podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team, every day. On this Friday edition of the show, we will be discussing the significance of the new commitment that the Global football program has received in four-star wide receiver uh, William Fowles. Um, we will discuss what the Miami Florida um, standout brings to the table. We will also discuss the Cardinals having the opportunity over you know the next couple months to rebuild that pipeline uh, between Louisville and the Sunshine State, specifically you know talking about South Florida. And then the final segment of the show, we will uh, take a little bit of a step back, um, go into a little bit of depth of a former Cardinal in the pros. Wide receiver Tutu Atwell has a good opportunity this preseason to carve out some significant playing time and a significant role for the Los Angeles Rams coming up. So we'll start out in the recruiting department. The Cardinals, yet another four-star commitment, this time in the form of wide receiver William Fowles out of uh, the Miami, Florida area. Fowles is currently ranked as the 355th best prospect in the country in the 2023 cycle, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite, ranked as a top 50 wide receiver and as the 65th best prospect in the state of Florida. Last year for um, Day Christian School, just outside of Miami, had 47 catches for 1,100 yards, which is very, very nice. The thing that caught me off guard was the fact that of those 47 catches, 19 of those were touchdowns. So over a third of his total catches on the season, he took to the house, which is incredible um, when you go back and watch the film because he's you know not necessarily truly a like a speed receiver, but a lot of his touchdowns were kind of um, you know short catches that were turned into touchdowns in 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 the yards after catch uh, category. So um, let's see. He um, – trying to go through the stats. It says on the on his 24-7 sports profile, um, total to career high, seven catches for 204 yards and a touchdown against Opelika um, High School. Uh, earned 5A all-day recognition from the Miami Herald. Um, just a, a huge recruiting victory for Scott Satterfield, yet another – um, momentum boost for a program that is absolutely on fire in, in the Flyville 23 category. Um, the main thing for me, and this is probably one of the reasons why this commitment is maybe in, in a in a league of its own in terms of significance, is because it's a little bit of a different commitment. The Cardinals, uh, I don't think it, in terms of any of these other commitments that they have, and I'm not, like I've said, I'm not, you know, um, I'm not like um, taking away any of the significance of the other commitments because they're great, but this is a commitment that Fowles released a top six back in June. Let me read you that top six. In, in the top six were very, very solid schools. Miami, the hometown Hurricanes made the list. Maryland, um, Florida State, Mississippi, Texas A&M, and Georgia. The Cardinals were not on that list in the top six. And in fact, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was a recruitment that it seemed like was winding down, that a commitment was going to happen sometime in August. And the Cardinals come out of nowhere seemingly. It uh, wasn't really mentioned, um, you know, didn't visit for the 502 barbecue, wasn't really mentioned, you know, 
as one of the recruits that could be next to commit. In fact, if you would have asked a lot of Louisville fans that follow recruiting pretty heavily, probably not many people could have told you who William Fowles even was. You know, some people know his name. I've, you know, I've heard his name obviously before. Um, you know, he committed. I didn't know that he was going to commit here, but he was a um, a guy that I knew that we had offered. Um, but the fact that he committed here and Louisville was able to come out of nowhere and secure a commitment for a four-star receiver from the Sunshine State in Miami, Florida, the significance speaks for itself, right? I mean, you see the writing on the wall. The fact that Scott Satterfield not only got a recruit, four-star highly rated recruit from the Miami area, but also did it in kind of like a um, you know, come-from-behind sneaky fashion – um, coming out of nowhere and, and getting his commitment, that's a, a different type of recruiting win that, let's let's be honest, um, I'm trying to think of the last time that Louisville like, came out of nowhere and was kind of like the surprise pick for a commitment um, of the past handful of recruiting cycles, you know, dating back to like the Bobby Petrino 2.0 era. And maybe, you know, maybe recency bias is, is, is like being a real phenomenon here, but I'm really struggling to to kind of maybe Brian Hudson in the transfer portal where everyone thought he was going to go to Kentucky and he ends up going to Louisville. Um, and even then, w- with some of these other recruits that maybe were, weren't really predicted to go to Louisville and then they end up at Louisville, a lot of times the Cardinals were mentioned as being in the mix. Look, Louisville wasn't even in the top six of his recruitment, and it's not a – uh, uh, you know, a lack of star power. I mean, we're talking about Georgia, Mississippi, Miami, um, Florida State, you know, so on and so forth, Texas a and and I get it. Some of these other schools are are securing, um, you know, top guys in the top 100, so maybe they were recruiting over fouls a little bit. I know that there maybe have been some rumors out there that Miami wasn't necessarily showing him the attention uh, or you know maybe you um, showing him the attention that maybe he thought he deserved. Obviously, I don't know that. Um, or maybe they weren't prioritizing prioritizing him as much as like Louisville was. Uh, that seems like that's the rumor floating around, but really can't confirm nor deny that. But ultimately, the fact that Louisville was able to come from behind in this recruitment, come out of nowhere, and seemingly just you know be the selection um, for his for his verbal pledge. I mean that that is huge. For Louisville moving forward, that is a monumental recruiting victory, not only from a standpoint of you're continuing the the team recruiting momentum, top guys wanting to play with more top guys, but also just the nature in which Louisville secured this commitment is huge, and it's just continuing the uh, Flyville 23 legend that is forming right before our eyes. The team is currently ranked 18th um, in the country with 13 commitments. The th- Thing to focus on there, yes, maybe they're falling down the rankings a little bit. Two teams ahead of the Cardinals right down in the recruiting standings have less than 15 commits. That's Oregon, and um, I forget who the other team was. Um, less than 15 commits, only two teams. So that's something to definitely focus on uh, moving forward is the fact that Louisville is seemingly going to jump some of these programs um, You know, with some future commitments. They are only at 13. Um, the average ranking per recruit right now, um, I'd have to go in and, and see that. Right now at the 24-7 Sports Composite, they're at 217.21 total. Average recruits 91.01, which is definitely the best in program history um, so far. Um, and another thing to focus on is over half of the players in, in the recruiting class right now that are committed are at least four stars on on at least one um, recruiting service, which is absolutely mind-boggling. Um, in terms of on the field, William Fowles, a uh, six foot two, one hundred and ninety five pounds. Um, I- I've heard he might be just a little over uh, two hundred pounds. Um, but overall, I-, I think this is a little bit of a different type of wide receiver than what the Cardinals currently have in a DeAndre Moore and J- uh, Jalil McLean. Um, you have kind of a Devonte Parker esque type skill set here, and I don't like. Um, I-, I don't like comparing tall wide receiver commits to Devontae Parker because I think it's kind of cliche and, um, you know, it might, you know, sort of uh, water down the comparison and just because you, you you know, people do it enough, um, you know, compare 
insert recruit here to Devontae Parker because he's tall and can win jump balls. Um, the reason he reminds me a lot of Devontae is the fact that he's an underrated route runner at six foot two. A lot of his, um, you know, kind of like uh, Allen Robinson esque type yards after catch, where he catches it and he has, you know, kind of very underrated speed. Underrated route runner does a good job of high pointing the football, which is great. And that's something that, uh, you know, early on he's going to be able to compete for playing time, especially, you know, with his frame. He's going to be a red zone target right away with his size, very athletic but just incredible at creating separation for his size because, you know, at 6'2", 200, um, you know, he's really doing a good job of, you know, winning the battles at the line of scrimmage and being able to, you know, explode with that first step and create separation almost immediately after the snap. And that's something that um, allows him to get the ball out in space and um, be able to, you know, take a third of his catches to the end zone. So um, a huge recruitment for a handful of different reasons for Louisville, right? I mean, um, number one, speaking, uh, it, it fills a need for a position that's going to be lacking next year. Um, you know, they're already down some numbers in the wide receiving room. Uh, now they have three commitments in the, in the position room, which is huge. Um, you know, both he and DeAndre Moore are four stars, and Jaleel McClain is a four star on a handful of other recruiting sites. So that's uh, big to focus on. And just the nature in which Scott Satterfield and company were able to come into this recruitment after not even being named in the top six back two months ago and not really being a team to watch for uh, in this recruitment, seemingly from the surface out, out in terms of the media. And, and being able to see, secure this commitment it is a big time deal for um, the coaching staff. So um, another aspect of this to focus on is that it is continuing the opportunity for Satterfield and company to create yet another pipeline alongside the one uh, that they've created in California. This time, revisiting a pipeline that has been very generous to this program over the past decades. That is the one into the Sunshine State. We're going to discuss um, the opportunities that you know Louisville has to continue that here coming up shortly. Um, after we talk about our friends and the title sponsor of the show, Bet Online. Look, BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, golf, combat, and esports. Uh, Bet Online continues to be. Excuse me. It continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. The commitment from William Fowles um, is significant for a handful of reasons. Uh, one aspect of it, of why it's so significant, is you are getting a highly a highly rated prospect from the Sunshine State, more specifically in you know in South Florida, the Miami area, um, four star recruit. Um, this gives you the opportunity to continue the momentum at you know in, in that geographical location. I know that they tried to get uh, Nathaniel Ray Ray Joseph, uh, who ultimately ended up committing to Miami after decommitting from Clemson and making an official visit to Louisville. Um, Louisville currently has two more commits from the Sunshine State. Um, they have uh, Miami, Florida um, cornerback Raquan Adkins and also uh, Bradenton, Florida native Jordan Church. They are recruiting some other players. However, they have the opportunity to really continue this pipeline. A as I mentioned, they've already done so with um, – you know, with the California side of things with Pierce Clarkson, uh, Aaron Williams, DeAndre Moore Jr., uh, you know, the, the list goes on, Jaleel McClain, so on and so forth, Jamari Johnson. You, you get the point. To create another pipeline here in, into the state of Florida would also be a huge opportunity here for Louisville for, for maybe a different reason. Obviously, Louisville's never really had a ton of success out west, consistently speaking, like they are right now. And I'm not saying that they're going to have a – um, a run to where they get a handful of commitments from one school like they did St. John Bosco, let alone a powerhouse like St. John Bosco. Um, but we're seeing some of that um, trickle down into the classes outside of 2023, like, like Peyton um, Woodyard, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, uh, Peyton Woodyard, 
the five star safety from St. John Bosco, um, the four star linebacker, uh, the handful of guys that are really, really highly ranked in the class from the state of California in 2024 are starting to visit Louisville now too. And I'm not saying that they're going to have that amount of pull in the, um, you know, the Southern part of Florida or anything like that, because this seems like a very unique situation for the program. But, you know, speaking from a pipeline standpoint, you know, the, there's an opportunity here for Louisville to really solidify a, a pipeline here with, with, with Stan Quan Clark, four-star linebacker from the Miami area, committing on Sunday. A lot of people like where the Cardinals sit here. Got a, a crystal ball prediction from Steve Wiltfong of 24-7 Sports, which is big. Um, there's also Sean Rush Jr., um, who just named Louisville into his top three. Um, seemingly kind of out of nowhere, the one-time Louisville, co- or, I'm sorry, the one-time Florida commit who plays for um, uh, Dunbar High School in, in the Fort Myers area. So being able to maybe not necessarily, you know, maybe Church and Russ, and maybe not necessarily being from the Miami area, but any prospect from the state of Florida, and, and specifically Miami, if you're able to get a guy like Stanquan Clark, um, Raekwon Atkins, and um, William Fowles all together, and then the two from um, just a little bit up the coast on the Gulf side in the Fort Myers area. I mean, that's huge news here for Louisville. And then need I remind you that the state of Florida has been very, very generous to Louisville over the past two decades. Charlie Strong really made an emphasis on you know creating a pipeline there. I mean, we're talking Teddy Bridgewater, Eli Rogers. Um, I mean, I could I could name fifty players. It seems like James Burgess moving on down the line, Michael Lee Harris, um, and then you go to Bobby Petrino, Lamar Jackson. Um, you mentioned him alongside with Teddy Bridgewater, coming from Teddy Bridgewater's high school, Tutu Atwell, JV on Hawkins uh, from the the Florida area. Um, the list goes on, and I could name so many more players that have really been uh, big parts of this program, um, but. Going back to that pipeline and creating that pipeline again in in a such a um, a, a talent filled area, it, you know, Florida is a hotbed for recruiting talent. Like California is, like Texas is, like Georgia is, and Louisville being able to put its recruiting footprint down in that area to compete alongside the likes of Florida State, Florida, Miami, who, you know, Miami is recruiting really well. And I'm not saying that Louisville is going to be able to come in and, you know, sway the five-star Sunshine State prospects or anything like that. But, you know, some four-star prospects here and there, the highly rated three stars, because it's easy for um, really, really talented guys in those areas to kind of get overlooked because of the sheer number of solid prospects in the area. So, you feel more comfortable taking a three-star from California or Texas or Florida or Georgia maybe over a four-star from other states and something like that. And I, I know that everything's kind of um, you know relative to its own context, but from a, a general collective sense, this is a huge commitment here. William Fowle's commitment continues um, the possibility and the opportunity for Louisville really, really to uh, get involved in the Sunshine State, especially if they're able to continue that momentum and get a guy like Stan Quan Clark, and if they were able to get a guy like Sean Russ. I mean, you're talking three, four-star commitments, uh, a very solid offensive line prospect, and a cornerback from Miami, Florida. So um, you see the significance there, right? So um, that's huge on a handful of different levels, and obviously we will discuss Stan Quan Clark if he decides to commit to to the program um, that would be on the Monday episode, but for the for the rest of the um, your recruitment uh, recruitment for the rest of the show. Speaking of one of the former players that played uh, at Louisville, that is from the Miami area, Tutu Atwell, currently in the NFL, going into his second season with the Los Angeles Rams, has a big opportunity in front of him here in the preseason uh, for a handful of different reasons. We're going to talk about those here in just a second. If you are watching this or listening to this show on um, certain streaming services, you're not going to hear the audio implemented advertisement, so just be aware of that. But as always, uh, before the final segment, I want to say thank you for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder that we are free on all streaming services, uh, including YouTube and Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you name it. Um, Five days a week, your team, every day. Tutu Atwell 
has a prime opportunity in front of him, um, mainly due to the fact that he's healthy again. Um, suffered a season-ending injury last year, unfortunately, so he wasn't able to um, get a lot of um, you know meaningful reps or anything like that. This year, it's a little bit different. Not only is he healthy, but presumed starting wide receiver Van Jefferson went down with injury and uh, will be missing a extended amount of time, and there is a chance that he might be available week one, um, meaning that it's up to uh, the Rams receivers not named Allen Robinson to step up and look to carve out their own roles. Uh, Tutu Atwell has been a guy that head coach Sean McVay has been basically adamant on that he you know, he's going to get a lot of looks in the preseason. He's been um, you know, seemingly excited about what he's seen in the offseason training camp. He's looked good. Um, I'm going to read you a couple things from Ramswire. Uh, .usa.com that has Tutu Atwell and Daniel Hardy among players Sean McVay is excited to see in the preseason. I'm going to read a couple quotes here. Um, I could go on and on about a lot of guys, but Tutu is a guy that's done a really nice job. Sean McVay said, we're working through exactly what his role in the preseason looks like, and those are things that we'll pretty much finalize that we kind of talked about last night and then working towards today. Um Atwell has a chance uh, in, in the uh, in the piece. Um, Cameron De Silva goes on to write, Atwell has a chance to be the number four receiver and a contributor on offense, but McVay wants to see how he plays in game settings. After not getting many opportunities last season, he should be on every fan's radar this weekend. Um, the Los Angeles Rams open up preseason play tomorrow against my Los Angeles Chargers. Um, Tutu Atwell, still, uh, I think the concerns that I've talked to from um, some people in the media, and uh, some when I say people in the media, I say people who, um, you know, um, who are familiar with the Rams and things like that, um, not national media, but uh, friends of mine that they write for different blog sites and everything, um, who, who, in my opinion, it, it's it's nice to get opinions from because they cover the team a lot closer than I do and they follow them a lot closer. Um, but the main concerns with Atwell um, not only is kind of the mystery that he hasn't necessarily gotten a lot of in-game reps, but it's also how is he going to withstand um, you know, the wear and tear and the hits from you know the NFL level. Um, being kind of a smaller guy. Um, so the the opportunity obviously was there with Van Jefferson being out and with this being preseason. Um, Sean McVay is a guy, like most head coaches, don't necessarily play a lot of his top guys in the preseason. They'll play just maybe a couple series here and there and stuff like that. But Atwell is going to be one of the younger players that gets more significant time. Um, he's going to be having to catch passes from Bryce Perkins, uh, the former Virginia quarterback. Um It'll be interesting to see what McVay kind of designs for Atwell. And let's let's be honest, if there's one head coach in uh, the NFL right now who could design a game plan for a, a smaller receiver um, in, in a lot of varieties of, of ways, look at Sean McVay. He's done it with a handful of different guys, and he has a system that you know allows guys – you know, smaller guys to really flourish in terms of the motion, in terms of getting them the ball in end arounds and screens and, um, you know, vertical routes or even, you know, punt return, kick return situations. I'm interested to see, does Atwell see a lot of time um, on special teams? Um, if he does, is it more kick return? Is it more punt return? Maybe both. Um, but as a wide receiver, look, this is a huge preseason for Tutu Atwell. It's a chance for him to, um, you know, gain a significant role this season. Even when Van Jefferson comes back, he has a chance to uh, get into the rotation. Um, and obviously, there's only so many mounts to feed in the Rams offense. And then you factor in the fact that you have Cam Akers and Malcolm Brown and Daryl Henderson um, in the Rams backfield. Look, it's 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 going to be hard to feed all these mounts and Tutu Atwell's workload might only be a couple targets per game. He might be one of those guys that has like two catches for 100 yards every game because they just kind of put him in and let him go. 
Um, but ultimately, I think that this is an opportunity here for him in the preseason with the injury to Van Jefferson, uh, with more reps available, um, now fully healthy, a guy that Sean McVay has raved about, um, has made some solid catches. Um, there's workout clips on Twitter, on social media, on the internet that show you how he's putting in the work. He's doing a lot of great things. Um, this is a big time opportunity for him even if he does show out there is the opportunity that it's gonna you know the 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 targets are kind of gonna come you know here and there because of how many mouths there are to feed in that Rams offense but Sean McVay does a great job of getting um you know various guys the balls in, in different ways and um I, I think that um I, I'm very very excited to see what uh, the Rams have in have in store for Tutu this season. So, um, hey, but that's going to wrap up this episode of the show. We talked about the significance of William Fowles' commitment to the Cardinals. The four-star receiver um, brings a lot to the program in terms of being able to continue that Miami-Florida um, pipeline. Um, you know, the talent he has on the field, the recruiting momentum that he's going to – you know, continue off the field in the Flyville 23 class. We discussed Tutu Atwell's big opportunity. Uh, we will have a episode tomorrow that will discuss, um, you know, an in-state prospect decommitting from a um, Big Ten school and now back on Louisville's radar, a top 2024 basketball prospect cutting his list with Louisville um, in his final list of schools and another topic to be determined be sure to check out locked on acc hosted by candace cooper to get all of your conference news ahead of the 2022 football season but that's going to wrap up this friday edition of the show everyone have a great day we will see you right back here tomorrow